Mr. Feller, Most take us away. <laughs> <You, laughs> yes. Um, two topics, please, Robert, on um, Senator Dodd's retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the president's reaction, and, and has he spoken to the senator again? Uh, I, I don't have the readouts, but I know that he spoke with both, both excuse me, both Senators Dodd and Dorgan this morning. Uh, look, obviously, Senator Dodd has been um, uh, enormously involved and enormously helpful uh, in moving both health care and financial regulatory reform, uh, uh, working on those issues and moving them through Congress. Uh, uh, the President has uh, 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 a great fondness for Senator Dodd uh, and for his work over 30 years in the United States Senate. Democrats will now have to defend four open seats in the Senate. Um, and, and as you know well, the White House has had to fight for every one of the 60 combined seats to, uh, to keep the agenda moving. <clears throat> How do you think these retirements in, in total will affect the President's agenda? Well, uh, look, I, I, it is hard to look uh, into uh, the crystal ball 11 months from Election Day. Uh, there's retirements on both sides. Uh, of the aisle in the Senate, they'll be the same in the House. Uh, we'll let uh, the political season play out over the course of the next 11 months. I, I, I don't want to make a lot of <clears throat> predictions for 11 months from now. I also wanted to ask you about terrorism. Um, we know from what the President said yesterday that the Brennan initial <coughs> Brennan report will be released soon. And the I anticipate that it will be released tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Um, the That's the public one? Yes, it will be an unclassified version of what uh, what uh, uh, John Brennan gives to uh, to the president. Do you have a rough time on that, Robert? Uh, sometime probably early after. And then our hope is, uh, sorry, band to get ahead of, uh, to bring uh, bring John down here and uh, go through it. The president also said in the coming days he'll be announcing more steps on passenger screening and, and intelligence sharing. You still expect that this week? Uh, I, I will check on that part of the schedule or whether that's part of, uh, of tomorrow's information. But I, I, I do expect uh, at least uh, the beginning part of that to happen tomorrow. Okay. So I guess what I'm getting at there is that can you give us a sense of how this is all going to finish. Will there be a final review mm -hmm. and the President will then speak to the nation again? How is this going to work? Well, I, I, like I said, the President will, will um, if I was clear, the President will make a statement about this tomorrow. That review will be released. The unclassified version will be released publicly. We'll have uh, John and uh, probably Secretary Napolitano to discuss uh, their review of detection capabilities uh, tomorrow here at the White House. Um, I anticipate that uh, uh, the President and John will continue to uh, look at the situation uh, and evaluate it over the coming months. The review will simply identify uh, and make recommendations as to what was lacking and what needs to be strengthened. Uh, the review process will be a dynamic one where the President and John will continue to ensure that agencies are implementing uh, their plans uh, for correcting what was identified in each of those reviews. I will say in yesterday's meeting, uh, each agency and department took responsibility for uh, their aspect of that systemic failure and uh, each outlined what they had identified as initial shortcomings and ideas for, uh, for changing those. And the, the President will be uh, uh, anxious to, to watch that and John will watch that and follow up with each of those agencies uh, as this transpires. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to clarify something and then ask a question. You said the review will be released tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And um, going back to Senator Dodd, um, how do you think it's going to affect financial regulatory reform, the push? He's been a leader in that, and there's been some reaction on Wall Street. Some stocks have gone up. Um, I, some have gone down. I, as is the want of Wall Street. Uh, I, I would say this. I, look, I think Senator Dodd has been uh, – a passionate advocate for ensuring that we have rules in place so that what happened on Wall Street doesn't happen again, uh, that we have strong consumer financial protections. Uh, and I, I think Senator Dodd will continue to work on that uh, uh, with his committee throughout this process. Do you think he's leading 
will make him more of a lame duck. I mean, it's a loss of that passionate advocate. No, look, I, I, I knowing Senator Dodd uh, and the passionate advocate that he is, uh, I think he will uh, continue to work hard and want to get uh, uh, want to get this done uh, by the end of the year, as the president does too. Jake. The um, <clears throat> president last year set a deadline for the end of 2009 for Iran uh, to begin showing some compliance with uh, international agencies and, and uh, when it comes to its uh, nuclear program. Has there been any movement, <coughs> if not? Has there been any movement? By the Iranians right. that we don't know about? And if not, what's the next step? Well, uh, the next step uh, is uh, ongoing, and that is uh, working with our partners uh, in the P5 plus one and throughout the international community uh, in uh, in looking at the next steps to hold Iran accountable. Uh, we have said uh, and made clear throughout this process that um, they should act uh, and demonstrate uh, living up to their responsibilities, uh, that failure to act would result in consequences. Uh, and we're in the process of, as you've heard the President discuss, developing what those consequences uh, are with our international partners. Uh, you know, I would say that, uh, uh, and you've heard the President speak on this now, uh, both in Oslo and uh, uh, over the Christmas break, that, uh, you know, we've noticed continued divisions within Iran, um, including uh, uh, much greater calls for universal rights and universal values. Uh, and uh, we are watching those closely as well. Should we expect that when the United Nations uh, reconvenes, the United States will push for the economic sanctions that they have, that you guys have threatened? I think that uh, working with uh, our partners and working throughout the international community, uh, we will take steps to develop what those consequences are and move those forward. Yes. When the UN reconvenes, uh, I don't know if it'll. I don't know the exact day uh, that that will be. Uh, understanding that we have begun. Uh, and had begun uh, even before the end of the year, uh, initial discussions both within the administration on what can be done uh, as well as with our international partners. I wanted to follow up also on a comment the President made in one of the interviews he gave right before he went to Hawaii. I forget and I apologize whether it was with uh, NPR or, or PBS. But uh, he was asked about the fact that uh, the minority in the Senate uh, has required the invoking of cloture, I believe, more than ever before. Uh, and what he thought should be done about it. There are the, the measures uh, that would require a change of the rules um, would, would be, one would require 67 votes, which you don't have. One would be a reverse nuclear option, which might cause serious damage to the Senate. The other one is a, a bill offered by Senator Harkin, which would have some sort of sliding scale of closure. Um, is there going, especially with the facing the prospect of, of uh, losing seats in the Senate in 2010, uh, or at the very least uh, a wash, but certainly nobody predicts that you guys are going to gain any. Um, is there any consideration or any support by the President for any of the measures to change the rules uh, so that he can have an easier time getting his agenda forward? You know, Jake, I have not heard of any discussion. I will check with legislative affairs. Um, I have not heard discussion here uh, about support for changing those rules. I know um, uh, Senator Harkin's bill has been talked about for some time, going back to some judicial disputes that were had uh, not too long ago. Look, Jake, I think the President's overriding frustration has been, um, uh, and we, I mentioned this a little bit yesterday in dealing with some personnel announcements, is uh, it's not simply that you see tactics purely to delay, purely to watch the clock wind around and around, but they don't even appear to be philosophical, right? When, you, when something gets filibustered and we take 30 hours to debate it and then the ultimate vote is 88 to 10, is the, was the filibuster predicated on anything else other than watching the clock wind around? Was it, it's not a philosophical argument, it's just an argument, I suppose, to hear people talk in order to uh, delay the passage of 
uh, vital legislation for the American people. I think the president, I think the American people uh, would be frustrated uh, and are frustrated uh, by um, the lack of not getting anything done just to hear somebody talk. A lot of liberal activists want you guys to do something about it. Are you going to? I, I will check with legislators. I, like I said, I have not heard anything about changing the rules. Dan. Um, yesterday, the president talked about red flags, um, these bits and pieces of information that the intelligence community <coughs> had that it involves someone who we now know to be the suspect. Was this specific information <coughs> that was tied to an airplane, airliner, anything like that, or was it more general? Dan, I'm going to let, I'm going to let, wait for the review to come, uh, the public portion of the review to come out and allow John to be able to speak in depth uh, about all of those, uh, those issues. I think to reiterate what the President said, uh, the sort of top line message the President had was, we understand this was a systemic failure. We understand that uh, information we had in, in, in our possession, information that uh, likely could have prevented or disrupted uh, the incident on the 25th of December from happening. Uh, the President uh, is anxious to, uh, and, and did so yesterday for almost two hours with his uh, uh, national security and intelligence teams, uh, go through uh, some questions about how we got to this point, and more importantly, the steps that we're going to take going forward to prevent uh, something like this based on what we had from happening again. But is there more, though, that we don't know about? Uh, is there more there? Well, without I, telling us. I think the what president has been very candid about the <coughs> fact that uh, uh, what we were in possession of in different places uh, and what ultimately uh, was not analyzed up through the chains in order to. Uh, to make the necessary uh, connections to prevent and disrupt this from happening. And again, on the negotiations that are taking place uh, to, to meld these two bills, the House and Senate, um, why why not have a formal conference? Why? Th that's a it? question that uh, I think you can ask uh, leaders in in Congress, uh, uh, either there or when they're here uh, later today, Helen. <coughs> What is the president, uh, why did he drop the ball on health care? It seems like he's ready to accept anything to get, get it over with. No, I, I, I would disagree, Helen. I think the president had laid out in, in front of Congress some very clear uh, uh, benchmarks that have to be met in order for uh, health care reform to hold with it the promise, of, uh, the promise that he outlined in that speech. Uh, we're in the process of uh, uh, working with Congress to iron out the small number of differences between the two pieces of legislation. Uh, well, you're not allowing the government plan to even be considered. Well, uh, obviously that's in one bill and not the other. Uh, the president, nothing can get enacted unless or until it gets through both houses. Uh, the president well, the has... The president can weigh in on, on the thing. Right. You, you're giving 30 million new plans to the insurers. Well, and the well, the, uh, and in return, uh, we are getting vital insurance protections uh, against pre-existing conditions, uh, against lifetime caps uh, on health care. Uh, I, I think the net winner uh, by far in this process will be not simply those that have lacked accessibility to health care, but those that have had access to it but have struggled with uh, insurance reforms. How are you going to pay for it? Uh, the, the bill outlines uh, uh, the bill outlines the different ways uh, and, and aspects that it's paid for, and it's completely paid for, as the CBO has mentioned. Chip, now, following up on Dan's question, um, during the campaign, the president on numerous occasions said words to the effect of quoting one: "All of this will be done on C-SPAN in front of the public." Do you agree that the president is breaking an explicit campaign promise? Yeah, Chip, we, we, we covered this yesterday, and I would refer you to yesterday's transcript. But today is today. And, and uh, the answer that I would give today is uh, but there was similar meeting, to there the was one. an intervening meeting yeah. in which it's been reported that the president, president pressed the leaders in Congress to <coughs> take the fast-track approach, to skip the right. conference committee. Did he do that? The president wants to get a bill to his desk as quickly as possible. In spite of the fact that he promised to do this on six I would refer you to what we talked about in this room yesterday. But the president, in this meeting yesterday, and I addressed that pressed for something that's in direct violation 
of a promise he made during the campaign. And I addressed that yesterday. Mike? Well, does the president think it would be more helpful if this process were more transparent that the American people could <clears throat> see? I got it. How many stories do you think NBC's done on this? Speaking for myself, Just to that's not the issue. Hundreds? The issue no, no. is whether oh, he broke an explicit yeah, campaign. So I deal with the information so the answer, that, right. that... So the answer was right. hundreds? Did right. I hear that's that correctly? That's got nothing to do with it. I deal with the information, <laughs> wh how, whether, how, however much or little of it there is. I'm saying, would people have benefit by having more information? Have you lacked sure. information in those hundred stories? Well, it's not a, do you think you've reported Democrats stuff that was inaccurate against, based on the lack of Democrats information? Democrats ran against the, the very sort of process we've, that we've, is being employed in the We had this discussion yesterday. I answered this yesterday. But the Is there anything else? in the meantime and, and he'll do them, so today pressed them to do you have another question yeah, I, the okay. um, does the president has the president expressed a, a preference on the approach to pay for reform has he expressed a preference well, either taxing I, the Cadillac plans or taxing the millionaires plans uh, which does he prefer I, I, I think they're going to discuss some of that this afternoon uh, I have not heard him uh, weigh definitively in one versus the other and, fi and finally was did anyone here at the White House suggest to Senator Dodd either directly or through an intermediary, intermediary that he should consider doing what he did today? I, I don't have uh, direct knowledge of uh, every discussion that was had with Senator Dodd. I think you heard Senator Dodd say, uh, in thinking through this, he made a, a decision uh, based on a lot of different uh, uh, a lot of different things in his life and came to the decision that it was time to step aside. John. I know you don't want to look into a, a crystal ball looking ahead, but Senator Dodd said that he was facing probably the toughest political environment he's ever seen. Um, and I wonder what responsibility does the president feel he and his agenda have in the political environment that Democrats are now facing and are making very difficult decisions about uh, their futures in? Well, uh, uh, I. I uh, obviously, the president has made conscious decisions about his agenda, but at the same time, Jonathan, we have uh, uh, we are dealing with a set of issues, whether it's uh, the financial collapse, whether it's 10 percent unemployment, uh, whether it is uh, uh, decisions on auto companies, uh, uh, that uh, Afghanistan, uh, uh, terrorism. Uh, those are decisions that uh, uh, the president has, has had to make in a very tough political environment. The president understands that. He didn't sign up for the easy part of the job. He signed up for the job. Uh, you know, I have to say, I think if you look at, uh, obviously, the, the president is, uh, as I said, has great fondness for Senator Dodd and for the work over the past 30 years. I do think that a number of decisions were made on, a, on an individual basis about whether or not to continue uh, running for re-election or uh, in, in, in running in the first place. I, you know, I, 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 I fail to see a, a, a commonality or a common thread uh, that goes through each and every retirement. And do, do you think that the president's push for, so, for such big items so fast uh, has contributed to uh, this you know, environment? Uh, the president has uh, taken actions to uh, deal with a whole set of crises that uh, he had when he came in. Uh, he understands that. He had to make a lot of tough decisions that may or may not be politically popular because that was what he was faced with. But again, he that's why he ran for the job. That's why he decided to throw his hat in this ring, uh, not to uh, just make all the easy decisions, because when you're president, there are very few easy decisions. Um, the president, uh, I think, believes that we've, we're on the road to accomplishing quite a bit. I think we've taken some tough actions to stimulate our economy, uh, to ensure our financial system didn't collapse, to ensure that uh, Two of our auto companies didn't go bankrupt and out of business, causing tens of thousands of people uh, to lose their job. None of that may have been individually politically popular, but I think if you look at, uh, look at where we have been on the jobs front in January of 2009 and where we were in the report in November of 2009, and we've gone from losing 741,000 jobs a month to losing 11,000 jobs a month, right? We're not certainly where we want to be, but we've made market improvement. Uh, four quarters of economic 
decline in terms of GDP met in that fifth quarter with positive economic job growth. And one, uh, mm -hmm. one quick question. Has the President talked to Secretary Salazar about his future, and does he want to keep the Secretary in the Cabinet? I think uh, Secretary Salazar is, uh, uh, again, uh, a friend of the President's. They came to the Senate at the same time. Uh, we think he's doing valuable work, and uh, I do not believe he's had a conversation with him uh, recently uh, about politics. Yes, sir. It sounded like just previous to the Salazar comment, you were sort of enunciating what could be a platform for the midterm campaign. How much do you think the president's going to be out there uh, campaigning for uh, people in his party? I'm sure he will weigh in on the uh, the elections. I, you know, I, again, it, we've we've obviously done our part in, in raising uh, raising some funds for candidates and for the Democratic Party. Uh, I anticipate that that will continue, but uh, I think to say that. Uh, I've seen a detailed plan about what happens 11 months from now would just not be the case. Now, going back to the review, Robert, uh, that they're going to announce tomorrow here, um, can you give us some sense as to just generally what issues this thing is going to cover? Then you've got this review and then you've got the, the, the final review. Maybe there'll be an interim review. Uh, how far is this one going to go uh, addressing the uh, human and systemic failures that the president mm -hmm. talked about? This will be very comprehensive. I mean, the president heard um, look, the president got preliminary assessments uh, um, a little more than a, a week ago from virtually every agency. The CAs came in a few days after that, uh, detailing um, uh, what had gone wrong. Uh, John Brennan synthesized a lot of that, and, and, and uh, they walked through a decent portion of that yesterday in the situation room. Uh, I think the president got a very detailed look yesterday um, at uh, what John has found in terms of uh, John's specific portfolio was on watch listing, and uh, obviously it's in a sense a tad broader than watch listing because information that would lead you to be watch listed uh, is what he examined. Secretary Napolitano. Uh, looked through uh, her charge and DHS's charge uh, was about detection capabilities and screening. Uh, obviously, they've taken actions in the interim to uh, increase air security, uh, both at airports here and uh, for flights coming into this country. Uh, but I, I think John's report will be, John's report yesterday to the President was very detailed. Very comprehensive. So tomorrow's will be even more detailed on the I screening think it and will, watch listing. Yeah, I think it will. In in many ways, this will be uh, this will be the uh, the close of this part of the investigation as to the 25th. When I alluded to uh, the uh, the dynamic of looking of continuing to look, I think obviously the president and John Brennan will be. Um, I, I think. Let me say it this way. I think if for the the president believes that we simply can't identify what we were doing on the 25th and what we now have to do differently. I think he will want to look, uh, continue to look at whether or not the progress on what has been identified and what will change, whether we're making progress in meeting those necessary changes. Uh, I don't have a timeline uh, at the moment for that, but I think John's report to the president has been uh, has been enormously detailed. Robert, okay. Any personnel announcements? Uh, I, not that I know of. Let me go. I'll go there and I'll come to okay. you. Yep. Uh, uh, change the subject a little bit. Uh, there's a report out of the Pentagon today that says there's one in five Guantanamo detainees uh, upon their release return to terrorism, which is up from the previous Pentagon report on the same subject. Uh, what was the linkage of that? to the suspension of transfer of detainees uh, on Yemen yesterday. I have not seen or heard about the, this la the latest report that you refer to. Uh, uh, I, and I, I don't have uh, handy what uh, numbers had been um, for similar reports in years past. Um, uh, yesterday's determination was made and announced um, very much on what you heard John Brennan say uh, over the weekend. We, uh, we, we never have a plan to transfer anybody either to their home country or to a third country that we believe uh, uh, 
we have reason to believe will, will present uh, a security situation for us or for that country. And, and in relating to Yemen, uh, I think you heard John say uh, nobody was going to be transferred back uh, that we did not believe that the Yemeni government could handle. Uh, the determination was made that given the, as you heard the president say, the uh, swift change in the security environment even over the last few weeks in Yemen uh, caused the president and the attorney general to agree that pausing any of those transfers uh, was the right policy right now. Does recidivism have any uh, bearing in the uh, Well, uh, uh, let me get a better answer from NSC uh, based on this report. I just I haven't seen it. Okay. One follow-up. Yeah. Does it make or does it have any, uh, does it make it harder to close Guantanamo as a result? Well, I think you heard the president say yesterday, we are, we are committed to uh, closing Guantanamo. Uh, you heard the president enunciate clearly that one of the, one of the explicit reasons uh, mentioned in very early recruiting material from Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula was the existence of Guantanamo Bay. Uh, that having been said, as John and others have said uh, num on numerous occasions, we're not going to make any decisions uh, that we believe threaten the security of the country. Is there a new date for closing by any chance? Uh, not that I'm aware of. On terrorism, you take and then come back to me. Sure. Can you assure the public, the traveling public, that all checked luggage on airlines is inspected? And will the government be giving... Uh, uh, let me, uh, I, 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 I'm going to point you to TSA on specific airline screening procedures uh, as a better place to, uh, uh, to get a, a, a very full picture of what they do on a daily basis. Is the administration doing anything to protect the safety of the traveling public on trains and metro? Are you thinking of giving uh, more money? Let me check with DOT on that. Uh, 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 I mean, without getting into a lot of specifics, obviously, um, uh, I, I think there's a heightened awareness across... Uh, across government. A couple Major. quick ones on, on Yemen. Is it fair to say that the pause you just referred to is an indefinite pause for a substantial period of time? Uh, well, I, I would, I, I'd, I'd forget the exact phrasing that the president used, but uh, uh, I would say until we believe the time is right. And when the president and you refer to the security situation <coughs> in Yemen, are you referring to the ongoing conflict both north and south that's been described as a civil war? Are you talking about stepped up Yemeni government efforts against Al Qaeda strongholds? Well, um, because, because uh, one's been going on for quite some yeah. time, Look, and the Al Qaeda efforts have started much more recently. And if yeah. that's what you're referring to, I'd like to know. Well, um, let me try to phrase this. Uh, <clears throat> the obviously there has been a security situation. This has not been a safe part of the world for quite some time. Uh, what I think you heard the president refer to, uh, without getting overly specific. Um, Obviously, just in the past couple of weeks, you have seen, uh, and we have seen a far different security situation. And, and I'm just trying to understand the linkage with that and the necessary decision to pause. Well, again, the remember what does that yeah. does that stepped up effort against Al Qaeda make it more difficult for the government to provide well, the security necessary to? Hold I, I don't know that I would draw the, I think I see where you're going now. I don't know that I would directly draw that direct linkage. But I would say that, um, uh, as John said last Sunday, uh, we never had a plan uh, to transfer uh, Yemenis back to their country if the Yemeni government was uh, not capable of handling that transfer. So that should be what we should assume now, that right now, for various reasons, they're not capable of handling transfers. I would say, say for a number of reasons, we've decided uh, to make the policy decision we announced yesterday. Follow up on Jake's question about Iran. Uh, you said the next step is ongoing. How much is that complicated by the very direct statement from the Chinese ambassador of the United Nations that now is not the time for sanctions at all? They shouldn't be discussed. Diplomacy and continued dialogue with Iran must take precedence. Well, we have. Uh, I don't. Now, not just 2009. Right, right, right. Currently. But uh, not to. Uh, we have discussed with the Chinese. I think the notion that we're not in discussions with the P5 plus one, I don't, I don't I'm not entirely sure that he said that the word discuss. Uh, that was not the right moment for sanctions because diplomatic efforts are still ongoing. Right. Uh, 
again, I don't, like I said, I don't think he said the word discuss, meaning uh, I, don't want you, I don't want either my answer or your question to leave the impression that we haven't been in discussions with the Chinese, the Russians, and our partners in the P5 plus one, as well as uh, in international efforts involving the IE and others uh, to address uh, the nuclear weapons capability of Iran. Look, Paige, I, I don't, obviously there are countries that are, uh, that have always had varying degrees of um, uh, interest in uh, the timing of uh, different different consequences. Uh, we understand that. We're working with folks in order to bring them along on this path. And to follow up on the conversation we had yesterday, which you referred several reporters to about openness and transparency, do you believe that the standard the President described in the campaign has been met as it regards the health care conversation? I think you asked this yesterday, and I think my answer no, yesterday standard. was yes. The standard has been met. I, I, again, I, I have turned on any number of televisions uh, and open to any number of publications and seen health care discussed uh, quite broadly this year. When, when she was asked about this, Speaker Pelosi said yesterday there are a number of things he was for on the campaign trail, suggesting that she thinks that perhaps this campaign promise is not being met. And then AIDS went on to say that she was also referring to the President's declaration he wouldn't raise taxes on those making less than $250,000. She interprets the tax mechanism in the Senate bill on so-called Cadillac health care plans is violating that promise. Well, as, as I think you know, and I would hope in the, uh, in the transparency of uh, network and cable television, you would explain to your viewers uh, that uh, any Cadillac tax is on an insurer for offering a plan that exceeds, uh, I think it's $23,000. So we can we can, add, we can add to the openness right now by having that discussion. You disagree with that assessment, uh, I, or at least from those I would, close to the speaker? I, I, would, I would disagree that uh, with your notion that it is uh, a tax on an individual since the proposal is written as a, a tax on an insurance company that offers a plan. I would say in, in terms of Speaker Pelosi, she was here yesterday. Uh, and I think all involved thought the meeting that they had was very productive. One last thing. Yesterday said Can I, I ask just a moment? You don't think they passed those taxes on, those costs on to consumers? I, I'm not an insurance company broker. Well, it's just obvious. Isn't it self-evident that they would do that? Not necessarily. It's no, not they may just fact, not offer. I think any economist would consider if they packed a tax on a. Uh, uh, well, I, I, are you speaking now for economists or am I speaking now for Not very well. I, I did it very well, but I mean, it seems well, then, pretty self-evident. Let's that just go up to back to Major's question. You said yesterday, I don't believe that anybody has legitimate constitutional concerns about the legislation being health care legislation. Is that an opinion that circulated through the White House from the uh, counsel's office? But no, you done no, a, I just, no, that, I, 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 nobody's done, a, is that, nobody's is that, done an analysis because I don't think. Here or, or do you have something that's substantive from a no, constitutional no, point of view or the counsel's office? I, I don't believe anybody has uh, looked at it because I don't believe anything anybody believes that it is unconstitutional. Dr. Robert, on the review and the announcement tomorrow, the yeah. pre, uh, you probably saw uh, Congressman Peter King on the morning talk show saying that if things are as, if the lapses were as serious as the president describes, somebody should go in the president's review. Has he seen anything that is a firing offense, a disciplinary offense? Well, one of the things I think you'll you'll see, um, Mark, when with the report and when you talk to John tomorrow, is that. Uh, it was not the falling down of one agency, one department, or one person. Uh, this, as the president has described, was a systemic failure. Um, the, uh, each of those agencies and departments yesterday took responsibility and, as I've said, outlined plans for filling the gaps that they found. Uh, I don't know what the final outcome uh, in terms of uh, uh, hiring and firing will be. Uh, I know the president is focused on, because of the broadness of uh, what he believes the broadness and the systemic nature of that failure is, is to find those holes and fill. So he does not envision someone uh, leaving, again, or, or I, that's I, still I possible? I don't know that a final, any final decisions have been made. I just, uh, I, I think you'll see tomorrow that um, This is a failure that touches across the full waterfront uh, of our intelligence agencies. 
I, we always think <coughs> the personnel changes are still a possibility, just not part of tomorrow's. Uh, I, I doubt the very seriously they'll be part of tomorrow. Will yes, it reflect any either advice or decision on how to prosecute uh, Abdul Mutalab in terms of civilian courts, uh, military tribunal? Will that be addressed in the review? Uh, not that I'm aware of, because that wasn't part of uh, that wasn't part of the direct review. Uh, they discussed this yesterday, and I think we discussed this some yesterday, too. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm reminded very much, uh, the, if, you, if you look at the uh, quite similar parallel cases between uh, Abdul Matab and uh, Richard Reed, uh, obviously spaced some years apart, uh, but each trying to do harm to uh, a transatlantic flight uh, using similar uh, similar chemicals. Decisions were made uh, by the previous administration after looking at uh, all of the factors involved uh, to enter Richard Reed into uh, our civil justice system. Uh, I think he was indicted two or three days after the incident and uh, uh, is now spending uh, life in prison in uh, a supermax facility in Colorado, federal supermax facility. In the two-hour session yesterday, were, did the president ever tell those executives sitting around the table that their jobs are on the line depending on how they move forward? Well, I think the president, I think the president was very clear in his, say, 10-minute opening statement that uh, to use his words, we screwed up. That something could, that this incident could have been a disaster. That that disaster was not averted, that that disaster was averted by the brave citizens on that plane, not because the system worked as it should have. Uh, he did not find that acceptable. Uh, he did not find, uh, he will not find finger pointing among agencies to be something that he'll tolerate. Uh, I think he was very clear about the expectations in uh, our accepting responsibility for what has happened and fixing it going forward. I think one of the reasons that he'll want to continue to look at the progress that we're making in addressing the problems that have been identified is to do exactly that. Have this process be a dynamic one to ensure that if someone takes responsibility for their aspect of the failing, that in not just in a report that comes a couple of weeks after, but a couple of months after, the President, John Brennan, and others will be able to look back and see progress that's been made in, a, in not just identifying, but in moving forward to address those shortcomings. And finally, will the President replace the Director of the United States Secret Service? Uh, that uh, it has not been discussed uh, under any circumstance that, uh, that I have heard of. I think he has great confidence in, uh, in, in Director Sullivan, who uh, has done a wonderful job in uh, uh, keeping he and his family safe. Yes, ma'am. Robert, the President meets today uh, with Charlie Rangel along with a small group of other House Democrats. Is the President concerned at all about closely associating himself with Rangel while he's under an ethics investigation and has already acknowledged being an error on his taxes? Uh, he's meeting with Charlie Rangel, he's meeting with Henry Waxman, he's meeting with George Miller, he's meeting with Nancy Pelosi. Uh, obviously, have committee chairs uh, among the three relevant committees in which uh, Health care went through. Uh, I think everybody understands that uh, uh, as part of the openness of the debate that we've had, uh, that legislation obviously had to go through the Ways and Means Committee. But just a quick follow up. Um, Tom DeLay was House Majority Leader when, you know, Democrats criticized Bush for appearing alongside him while he was under investigation. Is, is this different? Uh, I, I, I don't see the analogy that you're drawing. Yep. Robert, the Yemenis who went back from Guantanamo to Yemen in September and December of last year. Where are they now? Are they locked up somewhere? Are they on uh, home detention? I can check with the NSC to see where, uh, where, uh, what intelligence we have on where they are now. But can you say anything about the, I mean, what were the guarantees of security pertaining to that? Uh, have not gotten into describing uh, different arrangements or agreements that we make 
uh, in transferring either to home countries or to uh, uh, or to third party countries uh, as part of this process. Can you say if re ultimate release is in the long term plan I'm, I'm for any of those just not seven? Get into that uh, Rob, if for some reason the Democrats, the Democratic caucus in the Senate lost their 60 votes and by a considerable margin, how might that change your legislative strategy? <laughs> Just look at the Christmas. You know, I, I, you have taken me down a series of hypotheticals that uh, uh, it would take me more than just a few seconds to wrap my head around. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure what we'd get out of uh, either my short term or long term answer. I, Let's I mean, how, how important is the 60 votes to your legislative strategy? Uh, the filibuster proof Senate. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> Uh, there's many answers for that too. Um, uh, look, I, I, I'll simply leave it at this. I, I think the president, uh, uh, the president has outlined an agenda that he believes addresses uh, the problems that our country faces now and has faced for quite some time. Uh, we are thankful to have uh, uh, 60 seats in the Senate, and I forget how many in the House. Uh, to pass that legislative agenda. Uh, but I think to surmise what a strategy would look like based on an election that's 11 months away from happening, it's like I said, it's a little bit it's like predicting not who's going to win this Super Bowl, but who's going to win the next Super Bowl. It, it just, uh, it, it, it would be nice to think about, I guess, or play around with, but I, I don't I don't know that it would be based on any specific or Alabama. <laughs> um, I will email all my friends in Alabama and tell them good luck and I will root as hard as one possibly can. Sorry, Christy, uh, for Texas. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I'm, well, I'm sorry, Christy. I, it's, it's sort of, this, you, this puts a whole new light on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your answer would have been markedly different if Auburn was playing for the national championship. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <coughs> against Northwestern. <laughs> yes. Hey, they almost won. In the, Watch out. In the Pool and Weed Eater Bowl. Go ahead. <laughs> Some people remember that. That's good. It's good. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, Robert, on intelligence issues, um, has the president reached out to any African leaders uh, since this Christmas Day um, bombing, failed bombing attempt, or? Field a ter terrorist attack happened on a plane from a Nigerian man. Has he reached out to any uh, African leaders? I, uh, I can go back and check. I do not believe the president has had uh, any foreign leader calls uh, uh, to uh, to African leaders since this. I, I know obviously there are. Uh, uh, I, I I don't know exactly who uh, NSC might have talked to uh, counterparts or things like that, but the president has not something that could be on the radar of this administration, especially as uh, Africa, the continent of Africa in some places is a place where terrorists are being recruited and they're being trained there and there are tentacles leading out of places like Somalia mm -hmm. and um, i.e. a Nigerian right. with this Christmas Day well, attack. Well, look, I think you've heard the president discuss in the statements that he's made um, the... Uh, Jonathan, are you... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize you were checking your voicemail. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to make a joke. Um, uh, look, I, I think you've heard the president discuss in a number of his statements uh, actions that uh, our administration has been involved in in um, in uh, fighting Al Qaeda and its extremist allies, not just in. Uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, but as, as the president's talked about in, Yeme in Yemen uh, and in places like Somalia. Uh, the, the ungoverned spaces where uh, al-Qaeda tends, uh, tends to take root. Uh, I know the president has, uh, uh, has talked with uh, leaders from throughout the world uh, on uh, the causes for uh, that type of, that those type of conditions to be created through uh, lack of governance, lack of opportunity, uh, and I don't think there's any doubt uh, that uh, this will continue uh, both here at the State Department and the Defense Department going forward. I mean, you know, the President 
I know in traveling to Africa in 2006 as a Senate candidate, uh, spent some time uh, at a military facility that we have uh, very close to Yemen, uh, uh, talking to uh, leaders, military officials there uh, about the security situation, not just across the Straits, but uh, in Africa as well. Do you believe that because this, this latest incident was a Nigerian uh, gentleman and it puts a light back on uh, the continent of Africa, do you think that this is something that should just be still left up to AFRICOM versus a larger contingent? Do well, look, I, I think that, I, I think that uh, our command in Africa would tell you that um, uh, there is uh, and has been a lot of uh, discussion and working with not just other regional commands, uh, but uh, have worked with NSC and, and others here at the White House, uh, again, to ensure that um, uh, we're taking the steps that we need to in places like Somalia uh, in order to take the fight to, uh, to Al Qaeda and its extremist allies. Sam. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Robert. Yesterday you said you would uh, check on uh, whether the White House plans to renominate Don Johnson. I, I have not got an answer on that. Can you then, I guess, talk broadly about uh, what Jake was asking about, which are frustrations with the pace of how the Senate's moving, especially on these uh, nominations that the President has submitted judicially well, look, and politically? I mean, look, I, I, I think that, uh, as I said yesterday, we've, we've put a number of people into government in the first year, but at the same time, uh, we have seen a pacing in dealing with uh, nominations, both for the executive branch and for judicial <laughs> nominations, that uh, uh, I think, by uh, almost any estimation, would be would be deemed uh, would be deemed slow. Uh, but again, I, I go back to what 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 I, the example I used with Jake earlier. When you are when you spend precious time in a legislative body filibustering what you then ultimately turn around and pass virtually 90 to 10, where 90 percent of the people agree and ultimately vote for something, you just, you, you, you really have to go back and wonder what, what's the point of, I mean, this wasn't a filibuster vote that ultimately, uh, once you got cloture, was passed 50-49 or, you know, uh, or, or, or something that was passed with a with that type of bare majority, passed with virtually 90 percent of the vote. I, I think there's a, there's clearly a uh, a theory and a tactic of uh, of slowing down uh, progress on behalf of the American people. I think that's probably why uh, uh, most people continue to uh, uh, think that the president's far better in dealing with their problems than uh, than Republicans in Congress are. Thanks, guys. You'll check on Johnson? Uh, I have, and I haven't got an answer. And you'll give it to me?